What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Monday Night Raw for the reality era of WWE 2013. TW 2016 is the game. We're on the road to WrestleMania 29. We're almost there. Let's just jump right into it. All right, we have a pre-show match between uh, Gail Kim and Portia Perez, who's from FCW. Uh, Gail Kim wins with the inverted stomp face breaker. I don't think that's the eat defeat. I might have to change that. Uh... I, like I said, I don't think that's the eat defeat. You know, I think that would be the eat defeat. So she beats her about four minutes. Or actually about five minutes. You know, going on there for that match. And we're at the Fargo Dome. So that's cutting the actual main show itself. We get a segment going on where we have the Sting versus Cena contract signing tonight. You know, Sting and John Cena are going to sign their contracts with GM Stone Cold Steve Austin monitoring the situation. Hyping that up for tonight. We have now... We have a first match. It's the Dragon Aces. Uh, they go over crime time. Yoshitatsu pins JTG with a Dragon Strikes. Uh, Yoshitatsu's uh, Natsuda... I thought I changed his gimmick. Oh, no. I still have to change his gimmick. I changed a lot of gimmicks last time. But, uh... You know, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Yoshitatsu... They're, they're looking pretty good in the tag team division. They're beating crime time. You know, they're beating a couple different people. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how that moves down. Uh, next we have, uh, Chris Jericho and uh, Alex Riley. You know, two Money in the Bank competitors from Raw. You know, they're having a war of words backstage. Alex Riley's probably being interviewed first, then Chris Jericho comes up, tells him that he's nothing, he's not gonna win Money in the Bank. Chris Jericho's gonna win Money in the Bank, because he's the best in the world. Not like that CM Punk guy. Alex Riley takes offense to this, but isn't able to do anything as the Big Show side blinds him. And we're going to have later on in the night, it's going to be uh, Jarrah Show versus Common Ground. Alex Riley and his partner, Mason Ryan. So two Money in the Bank contestants will be going at it tonight. We got a decent match, about a 10-minute match with Madison Lane just beating up uh, Kelly Kelly. Madison Lane got a 94, Jesus you know, Madison Lane has put in the effort, I swear. You know, she's probably the best. Probably one of my favorite. You know, I, I really am liking how we can build a women's division out of her. But, that you know, regardless, we'll get more into that later on. Madison Lane then gets on the mic and sees, Do you see what I just did to Kelly Kelly, Natalia, AJ Lee? That's what I'm going to do to you at WrestleMania. And that's really all she says because she doesn't have to say much, you know. The performance, Madison Lane, you know, she's one of these many women who have come in here and have really redefined the Divas division. Can you really call it the Divas division? I'm not changing the name of it just yet. That'll come soon. You know, I'm trying to keep... Uh, I, I thought about this. I have a lot of stuff booked in advance. Women's stuff is not on that. But, you know, with Madison Lane and stuff like that, I really kind of do actually want to start doing that. So, you know... When women's division coming soon, question mark? Just not yet, you know. But, you know, the, I, I mean, the Divas title, you know, I like photoshopping it in, but, you know, we'll have to see how that works. And we have our last Money in the Bank qualifying match. It's Lord Tensai versus R-Truth. You know, we'll have to see which one of them will go on to Money in the Bank. I believe that match is up next. And it is, and in a decent match, uh, R-Truth defeats Lord Tensai. And more stale gimmicks, brother. Uh, these gimmicks are really getting stale. Either I've, I haven't played this for too long. I don't know why gimmicks are stale. I'm getting. I'm literally getting out a piece of paper to write uh, the gimmicks down. I believe I've done that one, that one, and that one. And we'll add Yoshitatsu. Uh, pretty much. Uh, I I was considering which one of them would do it. I'm glad it went with R-Truth. He got the better rating. I, I, I'm fine with Albert. But, you know... I, you know, I don't even know who's going to really win Money in the Bank right now. Uh, it's all up to toss and coin. Maybe you can throw some suggestions. But essentially, we now have the official. I uh, believe we have all of them now. It's going to be... Uh, well, I'll, I'll do it at the end of the show. I'll handle, oh, handle changes. Oh, here we go. That's what I wanted to do. Speaking of gimmicks... Uh, I thought giving Lord Tensai a gaijin gimmick would be cool. Like, you know, it's a foreign gimmick, but, you know, he's in America. So it's like, you know, just a little fun gimmick I had from there. And we get... The Miz comes down to the ring, uh, getting a great segment. And he just starts ranting about John Morrison. 
And uh, I'm using an angle pack, by the way, so it's kind of like, uh, just in, in case, I don't know if anyone was like, how come these, like, angles aren't in the default game, or, like, my other mod? It's like, oh, this is just an angle mod. I'll, I, if I find the mod, I'll link it in the description. Uh, but anyway, you know, the Miz starts going on about how, you know, he was always the Shawn Michaels in the Dirt Sheet duo. Morrison was always the Gennetti. You know, he's beaten them twice now. Morris, he, they've gone one for one each other. You know, Miz got one up on him on Monday Night Raw. Morrison got him up. And then he actually beat him on SummerSlam. It's not as simple as just three matches. This is, this is it's a blood feud. The Miz knows that. And he's going to he's gonna show everyone he's not just a guy that can be good on the mic. He is a good wrestler. And he's going to show that at WrestleMania. We get another angle here. We have uh, Bray. Uh, we have Evan Bourne backstage walking around. The, the, ignore this. The text. This how I just see it. He's walking around. He goes into like the bathroom or something. Lights turn completely off, and they flash for a brief seg second. And you see Bray Wyatt standing in the mirror holding one of the sheet masks. Just scares the living shit out of Evan Bourne. But then he composes himself. And uh, he actually uh, <coughs> maybe just kicks the mirror. He just breaks the mirror. Oh, like Kane did that one time. I forget when he did that. But uh, yeah, he just uh, we see some intimidation, some mind games from Bray Wyatt, and Evan Bourne's not really into that. <coughs> it's a it's an interesting distinction these two, where Evan Bourne is you know a great athlete, you know not the most charismatic, but you know somewhat there. He, you know, he, he, he's one to roll around, he's one to jump, he's one to fly, whereas Bray Wyatt's more of like the mind games. So it's kind of like the independent cruiserweight versus the WWE mind game player. I always kind of like that that distinction, that kind of well-played uh, rivalry that goes on. And we have uh, a match next, and we have uh, Jericho and Common Ground in a decent match. Jericho defeats Common Ground when the Big Show hits Mason Ryan with the knockout punch. Chris Jericho was pretty much the star of the show. Everyone else was kind of suck. Alec, uh, Mason Ryan sucks. Uh, Common Ground's a jo jobber tag team, except for Alex Ryan, who's kind of like... I forget. I think he's upper mid-card last time I checked. But, you know, you know, he's whatever. He's Alex Riley. You know, maybe he'll win Money in the Bank, though. Maybe he'll prove everyone wrong. You don't know. But for now, they're on the losing end of this uh, show. We then have, well, let's change the gimmick real quick before we get into this. Uh, yeah, so, like, a gener... I gave Wade Barrett, like, a generation next. Kind of like a... Not a legend killer, but, you know, that kind of thing. So, Wade Barrett and the rest of the United Kingdom, Drew McIntyre, Nicholas Magnus, and Douglas Williams, they're all sitting around talking about how, you know... Zack Ryder made the challenge to them at WrestleMania... And they're confident they're going to win, but they're also confident about something else, that Zack Ryder literally has no friends. He's a dweeb, he's a geek, he's an absolute dork doofus He's pretty much a moron, uh, <clears throat> and no one really would want to associate with uh, Zack Ryder. So they're like, you know, they tell the audience, they're like, you know, we don't even know if the match can happen. Because as much as we would love to get four-on-one handicap matches with Zack Ryder. I doubt once he realizes he'll friends, he'll even show up to WrestleMania. So, you know, there's that. So I think Zack should really start picking his uh, friends out kind of soon. We also hype up that on Superstars, uh, Douglas Williams is getting his match. It's a triple threat match for the NXT title. Uh, it'll be Trent Beretta. Xavier Woods, who's getting that, and Douglas Williams. So they also say that they're confident that Douglas Williams will bring back the European title to the United Kingdom. Gung Ho. Pretty much, I kind of took the storyline from, uh, I believe he was even called the United Kingdom from, uh, I believe it was WWE, thir uh, no, no, it was WWE 12 that did the, it was like the last road to WrestleMania. That was the gimmick, except it was like Sheamus and William Regal. Uh, they were the United Kingdom. And when they've got a video package just kind of hyping up CM Punk and The Rock. I don't want to use them too much. I felt it was kind of getting, like, just having CM Punk in the Rock Talk or kind of getting cheap ratings. I guess it got cheap rating here, so who cares, but, you know, whatever. We then cut to uh, Evan Bourne taking on The Miz. I probably should have hyped that up. In, in a good match, uh, Evan Bourne gets hit with a skull-crushing finale after another Bray Wyatt distraction hits Evan Bourne. 
He takes his guard down for just a second, and the Miz sneaks in and gets that win. Uh, an important win over the number one contender to the United States title. So there you go. There you have that. And then we have the Kings of Wrestling. If you don't remember, uh, Inzane challenged the Kings of Wrestling to come onto uh, SmackDown and, and get their rematch. They weren't going to wait for WrestleMania. And the Kings of Wrestling accept. They say, you know, yeah, we're going to accept that match. We're going over to SmackDown. We talked to General Manager Stone Cold Steve Austin as well as General Manager Shawn Michaels of SmackDown. And uh, the Kings of Wrestling, we're going to reign supreme once we regain our titles from Inzane. So we have that match to look forward to, Inzane versus uh, the Kings of Wrestling 2 on SmackDown. And then we have the contract, the Icon versus Icon. Uh, unlike most contract signings, this contract signing is a lot more subdued. Sting is actually the more kind of like a uh, vocal guy in this. Like he talks about, you know, the crowd's pretty hot for Sting. You know, the icon, a legend of the business. Stone Cold gives him some respect. Whereas John Cena in recent months, you know, if you haven't watched the prologue, John Cena's had kind of like, you know how they did the worst year, quote unquote, of John Cena's life? after he lost to The Rock and became a whiny bitch about it. Now John Cena in this universe has, I mean, he cannot challenge the WWE title for the rest of 2013. We're only in March. That's a long time for him to go without aiming for the top. He lost to people like Daniel Bryan, uh, Chris Jericho. You know, he, he lost to The Rock and CM Punk. He, he's essentially lost the ability to avenge his loss at WrestleMania 28. So, you know, this is kind of like a diversion for him. So Sting takes this match a lot more seriously. I, well, seriously in the sense that Sting, you know, he hypes the crowd up. He talks about, you know, he's honored to fight John Cena. You know, it's the icon of WCW versus the icon of WWE. No shadow, the shadow of a doubt. That's what John Cena has become these years. <coughs> And John Cena kind of just walks up, signs a contract, and leaves. That's all he really needed to do. That's what pretty. Oh, my Alexa just went off. That scared the shit out of me. Uh, but anyway, that's how we end that segment. Uh, had a run in from. <laughs> we had a run in from. Oh my god. Amazon's just running it and all up in here. Getting a run in here. We'll write that in. Uh, I'd edit that out, but I, I find that kind of funny. So there's that. So yeah, you know, we have that contract showing. We end the show like that. Let's see how the show did. 94A. Uh, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good show. Uh, not much else to say. That really caught me off guard when uh, that went off. But, uh... Yeah, uh, that's how we're going to have it. Uh, I'll see you guys next week for SmackDown.